What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool news video where we will talk about the big change in VR protocols. Shame this wasn't implemented last weekend where of course Liverpool got that disgraceful disallowed goal of Luis Diaz's perfectly good goal. But this weekend many Liverpool fans noticed an incident in the Burnley-Chelsea game where Burnley were, uh, you know, trailing 2-1 to Chelsea, Ryan Sterling scored the third Chelsea goal and then the play restarted after Sterling's goal before referee Stuart Atwell has actually stopped the game to check by the video assistant referee the VAR for potential offside. The check was still continuing so then why on earth did they restart the game in the first place but now because of the rule changes that I will explain to you guys in this video they actually stopped the play after the play has already restarted, so after kickoff was done to check if Ryan Sterling was, uh, was goal was offside or not. Eventually they ruled that it was onside and they gave the goal. And imagine if this rule has already been in place last weekend, then Liverpool would have been 1-0 up at Tottenham with 10 men and Tottenham wouldn't have been, you know, their, their score, their goal wouldn't have happened because it happened straight after Liverpool got that Luis Diaz goal disallowed. I don't think a replay will happen even though that should, that should be the right decision. Let me know what is your score prediction for the Brighton-Liverpool game. I expect a really, really tough game but hopefully Liverpool will be galvanized and energized and really motivated to get the free points. And of course you can follow and uh, support my work earlier on a Patreon. A link is in the video description. You get great benefits and please support me with just a few dollars because these videos make around five dollars per episode. So link is in the video description and thank you so much already to the Patreons who are supporting my channel. So the new VAR guidelines in the Premier League are in operation already and I want to explain those to you guys because not many people actually know about this. So the new VAR guidelines are already in use in the Premier League this weekend and it follows of course the infamous incident of the Tottenham Liverpool game. The PGMOL said that it would develop a new VAR communication protocol in an effort of course to avoid similar huge mistakes and it appears that the protocol will be enforced right away. They plan to enhance the clarity of communication between the referee and the VAR team uh, with on-field decisions and it looks like they again made a mistake by uh, you know allowing a restart to happen in the Chelsea game, the Burnley Chelsea game but at least now they have the power to stop the game and to finish the VAR check which was not possible by the rules before but common sense should have prevailed they should have top stopped the game in the Tottenham Liverpool game they should have awarded the, the goal but the, but the VARs now will also confirm the outcome of the checking process with the assistant VAR before confirming the final decision to the on-field officials, the on-field referees to avoid errors of miscommunication. I mean this this already it's it's common sense it already should have been happening all over the Premier League for years but it looks like the coming miscommunication is awful. The protocols should also allow for issues to be raised once play has already restarted which was not possible previously. So this is the big rule change. Now they can stop the play even after the incident the play has restarted they can now stop the game and go back with the decision of offside or onside or penalty or red card or whatever decision VAR decides to do they should be allowed and should be able to do that and this comes of course at the expense of Liverpool this comes of course at uh, Liverpool missing out on three points because I'm pretty convinced that the Luis, if the Luis Diaz goal is given Liverpool would have gone on to win the game against Tottenham and uh, this is the change that I wanted to see brought in as well but it, it just doesn't make sense that, that uh, common sense now is uh, used in the Premier League where previously it wasn't. All they had to do just pause the game, explain what happened to the managers and then uh, explain what happened to uh, the audience and to the live viewers, award the goal of Luis Diaz. It's called 
fair play and using your brain. I mean, it's, it's just uh, common sense. And the Telegraph is reporting that Darren England will not officiate Liverpool for the rest of the season, but this is not official communication. This is just a, a rumor. Uh, reported by by the newspaper and a Liverpool fan uh, said it seems a bit harsh on the other 19 teams <laughs> that Terran England will referee them I mean he's just he should be sacked and she, he should never referee a Premier League game again I mean listening to the audio these uh, referees should be officially and actively investigated by an official government uh, body for corruption and if there is a conflict of interest then I think it clearly is that uh, Darren England and the assistant VAR and another referee from the Tottenham Liverpool game were working for the Man City owners 48 hours before the game so there is obviously a conflict of interest there is an uh, obvious uh, question mark about match fixing corruption uh, biases against Liverpool so they the game should be replayed and yes some people are explaining that this is just incompetence by match officials this is just uh, human errors you can't just say to me that they are just bad at their jobs because uh, Darren England when he was offered the chance to rectify the situation his own boss at the VR headquarters um, his own boss said to stop the game to delay the game and he just says uh, nothing for like 10 seconds and then he says pardon so he's delaying and uh, brainstorming uh, during uh, this process as well and then when he was offered a clear solution to the biggest mistake of his life I mean imagine when you are in a job you make the biggest mistake of your life and the, your boss offers you a solution and you ignore that and you go against it and say I can't do anything about it there was zero thought about even trying to do uh, the right thing trying to do anything about it or at least own up to it their initial thoughts are to shut down the possibility that it could have been sorted even as they are told to delay and stop the game by a superior by his own boss they know they ignored that and they pushed on with the idea that they can't do anything about it I mean what it is what is it if it's not corruption and if it's not match fixing the solution was staring Darren England the VR referee in the face and he didn't take it he knew he had the option to de delay the game, to stop the game and to give the goal. And he deliberately chose not to take that option, completely reeks of uh, underhanded intentions, of match fixing, of corruption. But I don't want to keep talking about this issue, I just wanted to uh, give you guys even more detail. And the delay was called by Oli Kohut, the VR Hub Ops executive who spent four years at Hawkeye and who has a degree in sports technology and who seemed to be the only one to do his job properly that day, which is ridiculous. And I mean the VAR hubs operative should have direct radio access to the referee because uh, their subordinates, the people below them, VR referee, assistant VAR, they ignored his command to stop the game. They didn't relay their uh, command to the referee to stop the game to delay the game and these referees clearly don't have the skills to officiate uh, uh, using this technology even though it's not rocket science there should be an independent body managing VER who can communicate with the TV director and who can communicate with the on-field officials the referees as well and also it's clear that the referees are too like uh, friendly with each other protecting their mates instead of making the correct decisions instead of making the right decisions this has been the problem all along in England with VAR that the assistant uh, uh, VAR and VAR who are operating the technology they don't want to overrule the on-field referee because they are all uh, big white guys uh, golf club or something they are in a big boys club and they, they just don't want to overrule each other because that would make uh, the on-field referee look bad so they all don't make the right decisions instead they just uh, protect uh, each other like as I said a big boys club and Liverpool go to Brighton which is a really crucial game last season we lost there I think 3-0 and in the FA Cup we lost there 2-1 as well with a brilliant Mitoma last-minute goal so Liverpool 
have extra motivation to do really well against Brighton because of the last two defeats at the AMAC Stadium. But Liverpool in the past six Premier League visits, they have won four of those and one draw and one loss. So the, that loss last season was the only loss in the last six seasons going away to Brighton. Mo Salah needs just one more goal to become Liverpool's leading scorer in history against Brighton. He has six goals already, level with Kenny Dalglish. And Liverpool have met with Brighton 38 times and only failed to score in fi on five occasions. So hopefully Liverpool can get uh, two or three goals and win the game. And of course, Des Erbe's brand of football is one of the most exciting uh, style of plays to watch in Europe uh, alongside Leverkusen and maybe Tottenham as well. The high risk, uh, detailed passing patterns have bamboozled the big, even the biggest and best teams in Europe. I mean, Brighton recently went to Old Trafford and comfortably beat Man United 3-1. But of course, this system is not perfect. They, st they still have problems defensively. They got uh, beat by Aika Athens in the Europa League 3-2. They got a 2-2 draw against Marseille, I believe. The absence of uh, the talismanic midfielder Moises Caicedo uh, has left Brighton a little bit more success susceptible to counter-attacks as shown by success that had by West Ham and Aston Villa already. West Ham beat Brighton at uh, the AMX Stadium 3-1 and uh, Aston Villa just pummeled them 6-1 which was uh, still the, one of the most shocking results of the season. Everything went bad for Brighton but that's a problem that was uh, in the last game week so surely Brighton will want to bounce back and show their fans the, that they can perform at a much higher level at home. So this uh, Brighton is a dangerous opponent and Liverpool will have to be very, very alert and very, very on their game. And Trent Alexander-Arnold spoke about Dominic Soboslay and their bromance. He said, Sobo is similar to me, to be fair. I would say off the pitch, away from football, is very relaxed, laid back, downtown, chill. We take our minds away from football, whereas when we are in a football environment, around the training ground, in training, in games. We fight for every single thing and we want to bring the best out of the players we are with. That's why I think we get on so well, because we share the same ideas, same kind of mentality towards the game. We give everything, we expect results and we are both really competitive and also we are at uh, the similar age. Tran Arnold just turned 25 years old, so happy birthday! to Trent Alexander-Arnold, our Scouser Youth Academy product and he's already a Liverpool legend. And Trent also said that I think anytime there is new players coming in, it's always exciting. New players are always exciting for us. Uh, the lads have really brought in what we are uh, to what we are trying to achieve and have shown signs that they want to achieve the same things. We are all pushing together to achieve the biggest things that football can offer and Soboslay fits in perfectly at Liverpool like a glove from the first game and I'm so so happy to see a fellow Hungarian successful at Liverpool and one of our best players already. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this, have a nice day, see you later, good night!